Welcome to FGFI Connect. This is Richard Shakarian, and we're glad to have you today. And with me is Dr. Saeed Hosini. How are you? Hi, Saeed. Good to see you. God bless you. So nice to see you. Uh, all the way from Tehran to Chicago. To Phoenix. To, to the pizza business, to Phoenix and the Prayer Center, to here with us today. To, and he's got an inspiring story. But before he does, I want to give you the report of the day. The report is from Mexico. In Mexico, we've got teams that are going out and giving testimony in all different kinds of places. And in one of the places they went was like a, a village, or actually a pretty large village. And so they went into the center of the city and uh, conducted a meeting with a few hundred people that gathered from the, from the village. And they told their testimonies, very inspiring stories of how their life was completely changed by the, by the power of God. And so uh, down there, uh, the mafia is very territorial. And so the mafia was watching them. And um, then when this leader went back to his house, because he lived in that, in that village, the mafia met him there at his home. And they put him in the car, put something over his head. And uh, one of them said, let's kill him right now. And the other said, no, let's take him to the boss. So they drove him to the boss while they're threatening him. The whole time they're threatening to kill him. What are you doing there? Who gave you permission? This is our territory. Who told you to come here? Who gave you permission to do this? And they're just very aggressive, you know, with, equipped with guns and everything ready to, one of them keeps saying, let's kill him right now, let's kill him right now. And this wonderful man who is just an ordinary layman, just like thousands that are watching right now all over the world, just a humble guy, but he loved God with all of his heart. And all he did was stand up there, organize this meeting, and stand up there and give his testimony along with other people that told of the love of God. That's all he did. And now he's being threatened to be killed. And so he, he's praying in that car. And he says, Lord, I'm on the front line here. And, and if I die, I, I want to thank you that you let me serve you. And he's praying this way. He's praying out loud. And, he, and, he, and he's thanking God for the opportunity to tell the story of the love of God. And they get him over there to the big boss and uh, they shove him in front of the big boss, take the hood off of him. And the boss says, what are you doing here? And so he tells the story. When the boss heard the true story of what he was doing, then he got mad at the captors. And he said, who brought this man? <laughs> and one of them says, I did. He says, I'm going to deal with you later. And he says, you go ahead, do what you're doing, and we'll protect you. And you guys, you protect him. And uh, that was that story. Another time, uh, Mario Garcia, our president down there, he was uh, coming out of a meeting, and somebody came up to him. And they said, um, somebody wants to see you. Will you come with me? Well, you don't know what that means. Usually not very good. But Mario decided he would go. So he says, hey, any of you guys go with me? And none of them want to go. But finally, I think two of the guys did go with him. And they were taken to a big warehouse where there was, it was filled with stolen cars. By the way, Mario's car had been stolen two weeks ago. I said, Mario, did you see your stolen car in there? He said, no, I didn't see my car. <laughs> but anyway, so they were taken in there, and the boss was there, and a whole bunch of people with great big guns. <clears throat> and they stood around there and um, had their guns, had masks over their face. And um, what are you doing? Well. God changed my life, and they tell their testimony. You know, there's a power in your story. Yes. There's more power in your story than the greatest sermon that That's could right. ever be given. That's right. Because it's real. It's from you. And he told what, what they're doing. He says, okay, go ahead. Tell us more. Tell us more. So the boss goes, sits in a room there somewhere, and Mario tells more 
of the testimonies of his men, of what God had done for them, how he put their homes back together, how their children loved them again, how their wife loves them again, how he saved their house, how he saved their businesses, how he gave them a, a good life. And as Mario is talking, these men, many of them, start to, start to cry. Tears are coming out from underneath the mask. Tears are coming down their face. And some take their masks off, and, and uh, others put their guns down, and, uh, and pretty soon several of them are crying. Well, at that, the big boss comes out of the back, and he says, stop, don't talk anymore. He says, if you keep talking, I'm gonna lose all my men. <laughs> but you can imagine, the mafia there went from interrogating these guys to being their protector. Yeah. Amazing, very amazing. The power of your life, the power of your story, the power of your healing, the power of what God did for you or your mother or your dad or somebody else that you know is so great. It's greater than if you stood up and read the Bible to all of them yes. because they may blow that off. But they can't blow off somebody standing there and say, this happened to me, and this is where I was, and there's a hospital over there, and here's the corner where the accident was, and here's what happened, and here I am now, and you can see that I'm whole and intact and prospering. And so your life counts an, a, a lot. Your life counts more than you know, and the power of the story is the greatest thing. And the power of your story is the greatest of all. So we don't encourage our people to go into professional ministry. We encourage our people to become a witness of light for Christ right where they're planted. Grow, produce, produce. 60, 100 fold produce. And you can produce by inviting your fans to see these programs and then coming to one of our meetings, like our World Convention in July, one, two, three, four. So, Sahid, uh, I just had to tell him that little story of what's been going on in Mexico. Amen. Uh, now I got to shift over. And where did we leave off? Well, we left off uh, <clears throat> part of my testimony where God had was shifting from minister uh, from business into ministry, and then the shift was coming off again from the ministry to the next level. Now you you've had a unique experience in your life yes. of 10-year segments. Yes, you know, uh, just to tag along what you were just saying, the power of your testimony, Revelation uh, 12 talks about, he says, we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I, the word of our testimony has so much power when we speak it, like you said, because it's something that we have lived it, and nobody can argue with that. A person that have had their own experience is never again at the, at the mercy of someone's philosophy or theology or argument. You say, I know that I know because this is what I was, and this is who I am now today. So, yeah. so we do have a powerful weapon in our hand with our testimony. And that brings me to this point. You, uh, on 10, 10, 10, October 10, 2010, uh, I was on the staff of, of my church for some 10 years. And the Lord uh, gave me the opportunity to that night to, to preach a message. Well, for those that weren't here in an earlier program, in coming from Tehran and going to college and going to work for, uh, what company was Domino's that? Pizza. Domino's Pizza, right. not long after he got started. Then he went into business there. And he ended up, how many stores did you own? 15 stores. 15 stores, doing yes. millions of dollars in business. He sold a lot of pizzas. He can't even count how many. I had five pizzas did you sell? He doesn't know. But he's a pizza man, okay? Very, very successful. All the fancy cars and everything that anybody would want. And then something happened, and then he uh, the went into the next. Shift, shift into shift, the next 10 shift years. Shift came and went to the next 10 years, which was God was calling me into ministry, and I was running from it. I did not want to go into ministry. I said, God, I'm a king, I'm a businessman. I don't want to be a minister. I don't want to be a priest. I don't even like priests. And here you want me to be one. But yet God wanted m more of me. He knew he had my money, but, but he wanted me. And he knew this was not something that I wanted to do. So when I put my plans down, I said, okay, God, I will follow the plans that you have for my life and I'll do it. So I was in ministry for, for about uh, 10 years now. 
business, now ministry for 10 years. On 10, 10, 10, I had this opportunity to preach this message. We are the church that's thousands of people. I mean, largest assembly in our church. Uh, that night we gave an altar call. It was about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thousands of people came forward, and it was such an amazing night. Hour and a half after the service, people are at the altar crying out to God, and amazing things that happened. God said, now I want you to mark this night, because this is your going out to the next part of your life. I want you to, see, so start talking to me over the next few, few months. And I, and I was showing you yesterday on different dates and what God said and how he spoke different things. He said there's a significance with that 10, 10, 10, October 10, 2010. He said, there's a special significance in your particular life. He said, for 10 years, exactly, you were in business. It was almost within a week off. He said, that was your first 10. Then there's going to be a second 10 year, which is going to be your ministry, which I was right in the middle of it. He said, now it's going to come a third 10, which is going to be the greatest 10. And what I'm going to do with that 10, I'm going to marry business and ministry together. I'm going to bring them together. I couldn't understand what God was doing exactly what he was saying. So over the course of the next few years, he started showing me things. The message that he had been giving me over the past year, which I believe is for this uh, time now, is a message that had been preached many times. Uh, Revelations 1, Revelations 5 talks about it. He says that we are all called to be priests and kings. Now, you've heard preachers preach this. They say priests or kings. You're either a priest or a king. But what the Lord was showing me was, we are not priests or kings. We are, the Bible doesn't say you are, we are called to be priests or kings. He says we are called to be priests and kings, both. So we don't have to choose between one or the other. We are called to be both. Now, as a businessman, you are a king and a priest. Now, that means one of them, you're going to be primary. Another one is going to be secondary. So if your primary call is, is business, you're still a priest because you're a priest of your home, you're a priest to your family, you're a priest to your wife, you're, and to your employees, you're a priest over them. You, because what, what they see you do, you have, you have influence over them. And also you are a king in the kingdom of God to bring in the finances. What mistakes some people have made is they have said, I have to choose between being king and a priest. Therefore, they miss the calling, the primary calling, what God had for them. They step outside of it and go into something that God has not called them to do. Listen, you don't have to have a license to be a priest, to be a preacher, to be a pastor. That's just a title. God didn't say, I want everybody to be a pastor, be a preacher. He said, I want you all to be priests and kings, operate in both. We have to know what our primary one is, what our secondary one is. What is the gift that God has called, given to you? That's what we need to find out. When we ask God, we ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to show us what it is. Let me give you a quick clue. It would be what you're good at, what, what fulfills you, what God has gifted you, where his anointing is upon you, what his blessings is upon you. So if you're good in business, I guarantee you, God does not want you to go into ministry full time. <clears throat> what, what mistakes some people do is like, for example, I was telling you yesterday, a businessman gets up and gives a testimony. And... Uh, of what, what God has done in their lives. And he gets a big, everybody gives them a big round of applause. And they stand up there and they think, wow, I was just preaching. Maybe God's calling me to go into ministry. They, they mistake that that clap that they received was not for them, was for God, giving God the glory. And all of a sudden they, they say, God's calling me into ministry. I want to, they get a taste of what, what happens up on the pulpit. Not realizing that they're going to step outside of the calling that God had for them. Listen. Every time you get up and testify in, in, a full, in a setting like full gospel businessmen, you're ministering to kings as a king and as a priest. Because you're giving God glory what he's done for you as a king and a priest. You don't have to choose between the two of them. Don't make the mistake that so many have made. Like I was telling God, I do not want to be a priest. Now God starts showing me there's a reason why I had you go through 10 years of business and 10 years of ministry. Because you've been on both sides of that. I can speak to pastors out of the Bible and I can talk to businessmen with the same, same conviction that I have. Because you cannot leave one without the other. You cannot leave God outside of your business. And you cannot <clears throat> tell God that this is what I want to do. If God has a calling for you. And he has gifted you with something inside. He will show you what that is. And he will give you the desire. The, what mistake people make is that they try to tell God what they want to do. 
They try to tell God. And folks, when a businessman that God has gifted with talents to be a king does not have a clear vision of what God has for their life, what he wants to do, then he will waste the provision that God has given to him on selfish desires. That's what I was doing when I was in business and I was buying all these cars and all different things because I had no vision. I didn't know what, I had more money than I knew what to do with. But once God allowed me to get saved and he showed me the power of the Holy Spirit, he started talking to me and I started asking him, what is my purpose in life? Then the shift, when the shift took place, now I realized, God, you are blessing me for a reason. Folks, prosperity needs to have a purpose. Ministry needs to have a mission. Without the mission, a ministry is worthless. Without, without a purpose, prosperity. If you, you're being prospered and you don't know what God is prospering you for, you're just going to waste that money. So as, as priests, you, you are both priests and king of Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship. You're a priest over all of us and you're a king over all of us. As a priest, your job is what you're doing right now to articulate a clear vision to the rest of us. So we would get a clear vision, get behind your vision, and as God gives us the ability, God gives us the purpose, we'll find our purpose and say, yes, God, you want me to come alongside of this man and this vision, you're going to give me provision for the vision. See, the, the king's supposed to bring the provision, the priest's supposed to have the vision. You have both. You get both. You have the anointing of both of them because you yourself have been on both sides. You were a businessman. God said, now I want you to leave your business to you, this is a ministry and business part because you've done both. So you understand both sides. But let me tell you, what the Lord has shown me, the revival that's going to hit our nations, nations of the world, is not going to come through the four walls of the church. It's going to come through little coffee shops, through little businesses, through offices, through places where people are going to meet. They're going to open the computer and going to watch one of these programs. And the priest which is the king of that business, will stand up and will say, this is what God has called us to do. We are here. This business is God's business. We are here to make money, <coughs> to further the kingdom of God. That's our purpose. And all the people that work for that business are going to get a clear vision from their leader, and it's going to come from top down. It's going to go. Folks, the, 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 uh, what's happening in our world right now is nothing <coughs> compared to what God is getting ready to do. The greatest revival that this world has ever seen is about to hit our world. Things are about to accelerate. And God showed me acceleration through association is going to happen. Just like associ we're associating right. here. The purposes of God is going to be accelerated through association. And some of you are watching this. God has been preparing you for years. God, you've been asking God, why are you blessing my, my business? Why I have all this stuff? God has been preparing you for such a time as this. And by association, acceleration is going to happen to you, to your business. God's going to bring you in the path of the right people at the right time. And there's three elements for a miracle. You've got to be the right person in the right place at the right time. God has chosen each and every one of you for a miracle for your life. And he'll put you in the right place at the right time with the right people. And one of the opportunities is going to be this great convention that we're going to have in That's July right. for you to come. You're going to meet people that you would have never otherwise met. And you'll Pe find your place. Absolutely. People that have been running the same race as you have parallel yeah. race. You've been running the same race parallel. But all of a sudden, it's not going to be parallel anymore. It's going to intersect. It's going to be a God junction when you're, you are going to intersect with others that have been running the same race, asking the same question, God, what is the ultimate purpose and plan that you have for me, my family, and my business. Don't miss what God has by being so focused, so having your blinders on to saying, this is what you do. No, no, no. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 5.16, it says, don't, don't be as fools. Be wise. Like walk circumspectly. That word circumspectly is a cir means a circle and a spectacle. It means put your glasses on. Look around you. Don't be so focused in one direction because if you're so directed on what God wants you to do, you're not going to stop and ask God along the way for a course correction. You're going to miss what he's doing around you. Let us not be so focused and tell God, you have chosen me to do this and that's it. Who are we to tell God how he, how he should use us? Maybe he wants to use you in a different way, in a different plan. That you have. He said, I know the plan that I have for your life. See, when I was in business, Jeremiah 29, 11, I had my own version of it. I said, I know the plans I have for my life to prosper me 
and prosper my family, give my family, myself hope and a future. But one day God said, no, I know the plans I have for your life. And my plans are different than yours. Are you willing to trade your plans for my plans? The day that I said, God, I'm going to put down my plans. I will lay it down and I will pick up your plans. Folks, I've never looked back. I've never looked back. I've never looked back and said, why did I sell my businesses? Why did I go into ministry? Because every step of the way has been another <clears throat> missing piece of the puzzle to bring us to this state in this studio right now to be sitting next to you talking to these people. Where this is going to happen, what's going to happen with this, I have no idea. But there's no accident, as I said with the first program. The first day that we're doing this program is on a good Friday. Okay, is on the night of Passover, and it's on the night of the third blood moon. But God says all heavens and earth, all stars and moon, everything is going to converge together for such a time as this. And get what? We get to be a part of this. I don't do what I do because I have to. I do what I do because I get to. Folks, you get to be a part of this, what God is doing, this revival that's going to hit our nations. You get to be a part of the greatest soul winning machine, which is Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International. You get to. You don't have to. You can go and do your own plans you want, just like I was. Be lost in the world. Be asking God, why am I here? What am I doing? But God says, you ask me what, what plans for your life, and I'll show you, and you will be fulfilled. You will be, you, you fulfill the purposes that I have for you, and I will bless you, and I will bless your family. Folks, we get to do this. We don't have to do this. Yes, and you multiply the destiny. And you're here multiplying destiny of people yes. right now. Your destiny is being multiplied. Because we're connected to each people. other. Yes. That's right. And, um, you know, you've been listening to Saeed explain this, but you feel that you have a need. Yes. A need to make that choice, a need to make that decision, a need to lay it down and to begin on the path that God has for you. Would you pray for them, Saeed? Yes, I want, I want you to ask God to reveal to you directly. Folks, if God's calling you to go into ministry and you're in business, you're going to be miserable. If God has called you to be in business, you're in ministry, you'll be miserable. God will show you what that is. Ask Him to show you. And let me tell you, as a businessman, you have more influence over your employees as a minister because they work with you 40 hours a week. A minister only sees them two hours a week. So don't make that mistake. And I, I just want to pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, those people that are watching right now that are asking this question, what was I put on earth for? What is my purpose in life? Why? What do you want me to do with my life? I pray as they reach out to you and through the power of the Holy Spirit, they ask you to reveal to them what their plan and purpose is, that you would reach down, that you would speak to them, that you would make it very clear to them what you want them to do, God. And I pray the favor of God would be released upon them in everything that they do, that you would show them the plans and purposes that they have for their life, so they will be fulfilled, they would be completed, and they would accomplish everything that you have for their lives. And I pray, God, for divine appointments, divine paths to cross with other people that are going to have the same vision, and we just thank you for what you're about to do each and every one of their lives, and we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Saeed. Thank and you. And you can see Saeed in person at the World Convention. He'll be ministering there, and you will receive something really special. Amen. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And if you would like uh, to send in your prayer requests, just email them to us, and we're going to send them over to that great prayer center. And hundreds of people uh, will be uh, praying for your request, and you can send us the report back, the praise report, and we'll uh, keep praying for you. And now I want you to meet Brenda Rose, uh, Brenda Shakarian Rose, our daughter. And uh, Brenda has been doing a wonderful work which you'll be hearing about in the future programs with the ladies. But I would like her right now to tell you about our World Convention, which is a great family convention. Brenda? Oh, it is such a privilege to talk about our World Convention because every continent of the world sends people to our World Convention. You know, as I travel around, I'm touched by the young people's chapters that have been growing, the ladies' chapters that have been growing, and of course, the incredible men's chapters that we have. And what's happening is FGBMFI is for families, families serving together. And it's such a beautiful thing to see families restored and husband and wife working together. It's so wonderful. And uh, uh, June, uh, July, excuse me, 1st through the 4th, we're having our annual World Convention in Houston at the Marriott Waterway. It's there in the woodlands, and it has incredible facilities, shops, restaurants, but more importantly, 
you will hear speakers from around the world sharing their incredible testimonies about how God has changed their life both in business and, in, and through God in a relationship personally with Jesus Christ and how marriages and families have been restored. It's such an incredible time and I really encourage you to come. Well, Brenda, I remember the young people praying for their parents and grandparents at yes. the altars. It was such a sight. And to see people, young people who didn't even want to come, that after they got there, they were so excited because of what they saw. Tell us about that. Well, that's what happened at our convention in Panama, uh, 2009. I was praying and the Lord gave me a vision. And in that vision, I saw all the children up at the front and they were praying for the adults. Well, I've been in this fellowship my entire life and I have never seen anything like that happen. And I went into my parents and I said, the Lord has just given me a vision and the children are supposed to pray for the adults. And they received that as from the Lord and we went ahead and did that the following year. But the amazing part is a month after that vision, uh, one of our wonderful members, Joshua Hughes, son of Jimmy Hughes, got in a life-threatening car accident. He was in the hospital. The doctor said he will not live through the night. I called my parents and I said, he is going to be our main speaker for that healing service. And I, and I don't care how it looks, he's going to make it through and he's going to be our main speaker. Sure enough, there was a series of miracles and he did make it through. And at that service, we did have the young people. Uh, my son Blake sang, Joshua gave the testimony. And they'll all God be there at the World Convention this year and uh, many other speakers, including uh, Reverend uh, Bill Winston. And the kids will be praying for the adults again, and we'll see many miracles again this year. And it'll really touch your whole family. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you in Houston. <laughs>